How do we enable robots to perform tasks in a large and arbitrary environment? In this video, we demonstrate a couple of methods for controlling a mobile robot to perform tasks that would be impossible to achieve with a fixed base robotic arm. The goal of our project was to implement a controller for a robot arm on a mobile base with non-holonomic constraints. The robot must be capable of picking and placing objects and perform sweeping motions like painting an object. A robot with these abilities could be useful for transporting items across a factory, doing chores at home, or painting a large object like the side of a house. The challenge of controlling a mobile manipulator is due to redundant degrees of freedom and non-holonomic constraints on the base. There are many different configurations the robot can use to reach the same point. Some configurations are better than others, and we will exploit this freedom in the design of our controllers. In other ways, we now have less freedom. Unlike the arms we have studied in class, a non-holonomic system is incapable of moving in any arbitrary direction. For example, our differential drive base can turn and go forward, but it cannot slide from left to right. This led us to consider two types of control methods, hierarchical control and full body coordination. Our hierarchical controller treats the base of the robot and the arm as two separate systems. First, we move the base of the robot to a location near the target point. Then, we solve for the position of the arm while keeping the robot base fixed. The downside of this approach is that it requires us to compute explicit paths and final configurations for both the base and the arm. By not taking the entire system into consideration, this can lead to suboptimal configurations with low manipulability. Our second approach considers the non-holonomic base and the robot arm as a single system. Instead of specifying a task for the base and the arm separately, the controller determines the input to both the base and the arm simultaneously. The key advantage of this approach is that we don't need to explicitly compute a path for the robot to follow. We can take advantage of the kinematic redundancy in the system and minimize a cost function that encourages the robot to avoid obstacles and maximize manipulability. Originally, we had only planned to implement manipulability maximization. Once we ran the simulation, we quickly realized that the robot preferred to do its work inside of our objects. We added a second optimization objective, artificial potential fields, to force the robot to work outside. We noticed that the robot does have a tendency to get stuck in local minima and poor configurations with the full coordination controller, though we are genuinely pleased with our results we're surprised at the effectiveness of the optimization routine. 